In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. This is a unique day, special day. I mean, it's very rare when January 1st falls on a Sunday. And I think it bodes well for 2023. What a better way to start the new year than together as a family and giving God his due worship and praise. And because January 1st falls on a Sunday, we have a plethora of themes to touch on and meditate upon. The first one is obvious. Happy New Year. <laughs> and it is my prayer for you, my deep desire, my little flock, that you uh, have a year filled with good health and good thoughts. My mother once told me, Kalo Mialo, have a good mind. And it kind of reminds me of uh, that hymn that we celebrate at the, commemorate, at the commemoration of the feast of the beheading of St. John the Baptist, his martyrdom. One of the hymns, the Vespers, says he described that head of St. John the Baptist as a chamber of divine thoughts. Isn't that, it's so creative, it's so beautiful. May our heads, our very heads, be chambers of divine thoughts. Kalomialo. A second uh, theme that we can meditate upon is that today is the eighth day of Christmas. Now keep in mind and remember that as Orthodox Christians, the 12 days of Christmas do not precede Christmas, they follow Christmas. And so today is the eighth day of Christmas. And in that Christmas carol that we hear, uh, the 12 days of Christmas, and that one verse, it talks about the eighth day. On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me eight maids a-milking. Did you know that, that those words, eight maids a-milking, is in reference to the eight beatitudes that our Lord Jesus Christ said at the Sermon on the Mount? Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek, blessed are the pure in heart, and so on. Fun fact for you for the eighth day of Christmas. Also on this day is the feast day of one of our greatest saints, Saint Basil the Great. And I love what his Apolitikion says about, about him, Saint Basil. He says, you set in order the character of people by your words and by your acts. Again, beautiful hymnology. Our orthodoxy is so beautiful. There's treasures that we don't even know about. They're covered up in Byzantine language and in Vesper services that are not well attended. Sometimes we don't even do them. And it's, that's, that's on me. Orthro services, they're there. There are these little hymns that are buried in there with this wisdom. And so you set in order the character of people by your words and by your deeds. That's what a bishop is supposed to do set in order the character of his people. And that's what St. Basil did. Finally, uh, there's sort of an enigmatic and overlooked feast today, and that is the circumcision of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the, the mystery of that. The great lawgiver now submits to the law at eight days. We read about it in today's gospel lesson. On the eighth day, he was circumcised in the flesh according to the Jewish custom. Old Israel, that's what they did. Every male child on the eighth day was circumcised. The lawgiver submits to his own law. He does that to fulfill the law. Circumcision is no longer required to the new Israel. The Lord came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. We, when we receive this law, ancient Israel, and even now with new Israel, we, we sort of take these rites and uh, sacraments and we make them gods in themselves and we end up worshiping the externals. We just didn't get it right. 
and we judge others. We apply these laws with, without love and judge, judgmentalism. That's what we do. And so the Lord himself, God, had to become man and fulfill the laws and apply them the way they're supposed to be. He didn't abolish the laws, he fulfilled them. And so circumcision is no longer necessary. However, something of circumcision still carries on. Not a circumcision of the flesh, but a circumcision made without hands, as St. Paul said in today's epistle lesson. A circumcision of the heart. A circumcision that we cut out with spiritual surgery. We cut out the fat in our lives. The things we know that are not beneficial to our soul. The things we know that are not pleasing to the Lord. We cut those things out. We circumcise those things. At least we try. We never accept them as that's the way it is, that's life, you know. No, that's not the pious and orthodox Christian. We have to be soldiers. This is spiritual warfare. Even if you fall, don't justify it. Just get back up and keep trying. Falling is not the big deal. The big deal is quitting and justifying. That's the sin. Don't justify anything. Seek out that spiritual surgery, that circumcision without hands. And go to your grave fighting. Be a soldier. And the Lord will reward you with favor, with wisdom, and with blessings. Happy New Year, my friends. God bless you.